Hey guys, Jet888 here. Okay, so this here is the Honorable Gina Raimondo. She is the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. And here she is, this is two years ago, um, making a comment, they spelled it wrong, but COVID showed us all broadband is not a luxury. And you know what? She's totally telling you the truth. Yep, it's a military-grade weapon. And she even shows it in here when she says it's a military-grade weapon. Notice the backdrop, the Economic Club of Washington, D.C. I don't want to get too into this or too deep, but the Economic Club. Looking at the anagram, it's also Conic Telecom Hub. And I've talked about the hub. You know, this one that shows all the LGBTQ colors and all that. It's the telecom referring to telecommunications. And when I thought of the conic, it reminded me of this, the little dunce cap. And this says dunce corner, the cap of a fool fits the head of a dunce. And this little girl, interesting, she's running up to him with her little book as he's pouting with his little donkey ears and um, almost looks like a little jester hat also, like Jordan Peterson's outfit, that jester looking thing, the Joker. But her hat also, besides having like a half moon, like the shape of the moon that the Shriners, this is the Shriners logo that they use, this Egyptian kind of moon thing with the star. But her hat also reminded me of Captain Hook. And um, it's just sort of weird. I just sort of wonder if maybe that's Sandy. I don't know. But see, he has like a little sharp needle thingy pointy there. And also in this picture, there's also a little arrow thing that's hanging up that little wreathy, whatever that is. You've got the little pin quill on the bottom of the ground. But anyhow, I just thought that this was sort of weird. So it also made me look at the feather in a cap. It reminds me of that song, Yankee Doodle. But here's the numerology behind Yankee Doodle. Here's your 696 and your 594. So here's a few of the um, Jewish gematria. 333, decode Messiah Christ. There's terrorist, which all these people are. And the English and simple gematria for Yankee Doodle is also Global Reset. But they like that 696 and the 69. They like that. And then there's your 911 upside down. If we look at 11116, it could be 911. Flip everything upside down. And you know what happens when I look at the anagram for Yankee Doodle? Remember the put a feather in his cap? And I looked at feather in his cap and that's Make America Great Again, and a feather in his cap is also mind control. But when I look at the anagram for Yankee Doodle, does he look trustworthy? So Yankee Doodle is okay, do needle. So that feather in his cap and that sharp little sword kind of goes well with him, doesn't it? There's always a hook like Miss Sandy here. So when I look at the economic club and I see the word telecom, so this looks like it's tele. It says the term derives from two Greek words and that's, I don't know how to say that, but it looks like the word tele and it's end goal, purpose. And when I look a little further into the word conic, I see this, it's antenna blind cone, and this is a radiation pattern. I don't really know anything about this. I'm just showing what I found. And it's under the antenna blind cone. And here it talks about this in telecommunications, antenna blind cone, sometimes called a cone of silence or antenna blind spot. And what's weird is um, there was an antenna in that needle craft. And this further down says, the antenna blind cone is also referred to as the cone of silence. So it just kind of connects with the radiation pattern and what they're doing to people.
and this cone of silence, it also talks about um, US weather radars also. And isn't this sort of an interesting um, radar tower? I just find this kind of a strange thing, but there's a lot of cones there. And a little further with the cone communications, it's uh, cone communications is a public relations and marketing agency known for igniting brands with high impact strategies. But anyhow, um, it's just so weird how this all kind of keeps working together in a bad way. And cone communications is a division of Omnicom group. And the CEO is Bill Fleischman, like Fleshman. Anyhow, these little freaky people with all their weird little, um, I don't know, maybe it's just, you know, maybe I'm just creating all this in my head, but I think it's really interesting how things kind of keep running together. What a bunch of little coincidences. And isn't that funny? There's all these little dunce hats, um, this little poor kid. It's, you know, you're always being made to feel guilty or that you're just not good enough or whatever and here's this little kid pouting i will be good i will be good okay so okay do needle and this pushing the techie smarty pants here she talks about getting behind china you know like we're behind like we're in last place or 10th place actually she said but needle free vaccines named wef there's your few if you turn that upside down because that's what they want fewer people fewer of us so WEF Technology Pioneer, and they talk about this company, Vaxas, Vaxas, um, by the World Economic Forum for their needle-free vaccine technology. And look how tiny that little thing is. But they actually have smaller things and they know it because it's called nanotech. But this company has been named a World Economic Forum Technology Pioneer, but back to the economic club as it's just so in your face right in front of you and you know what it's because if you don't look then you consent if you don't say anything about it you're you're consenting it's okay because if you're too lazy or ignorant to dig deep or tired because they keep us exhausted um you know if you don't look then and you don't try to uncover what they're really saying then you you don't hear and know and see what they're saying but they tell you the economic club of washington dc was founded in 1986 as a group that would serve to recognize the role that washington plays in the world economy and the states here eminent form for the exchange of information about critical public policy issues um, that almost sounds like a bilderberg type of group like the committee of 300 or something but it says um, that this <laughs> these uh, they have top echelon speakers which included Hillary Clinton um, the one that smashed her cell phone when um, information was needed if any of us did that it would be considered destroying our destruction of evidence and we probably would have been arrested so they're all about the global um, agenda. So that's basically one world, one world government, one world religion. So back to this beauty. Um, so COVID shows us all broadband is not a luxury. And she's right. And she's not lying because what broadband really is. So any of us can look this up. It's what is broadband. And down here in telecommunications, the broadband is the wide bandwidth data transmission that exploits signals at a widespread of frequencies. Remember, we are frequencies or several different um, simultaneous frequencies that is used in fast internet connections. The medium can be coaxial cable, optical fiber, wireless internet, twisted pair, or satellite. So it they exploit signals. So this says make full use of and derive benefit from or exploit to treat someone unfairly in order to make money or to get an advantage, like maybe depopulate them so you have more of their stuff and more room and more resources for yourself. So in one of my last videos, my recent videos here, 
These are all uh, directed energy weapon targeted individual patents. Just look at that universal hedonics, whatever that is. So Raytheon, United States Air Force, what did they do? Remotely transmits intelligible subjective sound into target consciousness. That's the voice to skull. They can basically make you feel like you either think you're hearing God or this is what can drive people crazy. You know, they're told to go shoot someone. <laughs> and they do it. And look, that's the United States Air Force has that. Anyhow, these are um, a lot of frequencies that literally are for controlling people. I don't think any of these would fall under the um, boundaries of natural law. I think all of these are taking advantage of exploiting or doing to people something that um, isn't right without their consent. I just picked one out of the crowd here, apparatus and method for remotely monitoring and altering brain waves. And here's just one of these patents by Robert G. Malik. So summary of the invention, just scanning down real quickly, more specifically, high frequency transmitters are operated to radiate electromagnetic energy of different frequencies through antennas. Guess what that um, the uh, needle craft had? It had an antenna in it, just to let you know. So through antennas, which are capable of scanning the entire brain of the test subject or any desired region thereof, the signals of different frequencies penetrate the skull of the subject and impinge upon the brain where they mix to yield an interference wave modulated by radiations from the brain's natural electrical activity. The modulated interference wave is retransmitted by the brain and received by an antenna to a remote station where it is demodulated and processed to provide a profile of the subject's brain waves. So in addition to passively monitoring his brain waves, the subject's neurological processes may be affected by transmitting to his brain through a transmitter compensating signals. The latter signals can be derived from the received and processed brain waves. So you wonder why people go crazy all of a sudden? So this patent was granted long time ago, April 20th, 1976. They were doing this. So you've got your transmitter. Anytime you can receive or send. Anytime you can send, you can receive. Anytime you can receive, you can send. So anyhow, here is one of their um, pictures of this. The brain with the transmitter, amplifier. Where is, let's see, I was looking for an um, operating system, but I guess that's something different, sort of, maybe, not really. You guys, um, if you have time, you really need to go back and listen to what she states because she basically says, so she says, it's just a fact. If we want to remain at the forefront of innovation, we must expand R&D investments. So that's research and development, which they've been doing the last, definitely the last four years with all their needle crafting. She says, so that we can move innovations from the lab to the marketplace at 21st century speed. She, this woman's dangerous. You need to listen to her, what she's saying. So she's talking all about the Build Back Better Act. Um, she, she's just hitting all the buzzwords. She talks about, she talks about, let me read my notes here, the upgrades in labs and expansion of climate change innovations. That's that net zero thing. That's like getting rid of all the carbon, you basically. Yep, there it is. Labs across the country and expansions of climate change innovation. Okay, I'm so sick of this. So regarding their dumbass um, making us feel guilty and of our footprint um, and their whole, what is it, the net zero carbon emissions BS, like CBS, that mainstream medium, whatever. Oh my God, it's so frustrating. People are so stupid. So here's my anagram, net zero carbon emissions 
is corona inertness zombies and inertness is kind of like lethargic apathy um, probably what a lot of us have been feeling lately even our dogs have you noticed your dogs are just my god they're just so out of it we are being gassed there's something's going on like they're telling us net zero carbon emissions when they're probably gassing us overhead in our environment that's probably what's going on Oh yeah, and Alaska Airlines today was telling me these are just, um, they're called contrails. Yeah, and they're called contrails because they're, you're labeling them so you persuade someone to do or believe something typically by use of a deception. Mm-hmm. Contrails because you say that they're just simply water vapors, an instance of deceiving or tricking someone. Con. So you know me, I can't help myself. I had to look at her anagram or the few. So here you go. And as they needle crafted antennas basically into people these last handful of years, the needle craft agenda, um, Gina Ray Mondo, radio go in man. So here's another one I kind of thought was funny because it's like, um, you know, they're kind of targeting the patriots. And I think if you, if you consider people, the MAGA people are kind of the, what you look at as the Patriots, um, even though I think they're being set up, but her anagram is ID MAGA. So they have to know who we are in or on, you know, whether you're going to inject them with something or surveil them, who knows with the cameras because American, the anagram for American is in camera. She said she used the words bold workforce. And I looked at the anagram for that. It's block for or do so like do weapon us or rob or do flock like direct energy weapon the flock so they're going to need to just steal from us or do direct energy weapon us another possibility is aim dragon ion i was reading one of these patents in here and um, they're all interesting but they're all about controlling or killing you because you're the enemy we're the enemy of the state so way down the bottom here, here's the acronyms, ULF, ELF, that's your ELF, extremely low frequencies, all the things on the left. And then it talks about the frequency designator there, ultra low frequency to extremely low, voice frequencies, low frequencies, medium frequencies, high, very high, ultra high, super high, extremely high frequencies. And here are the numbers of the frequency range. And here's your 5G launch band at 3.5 gigahertz. So now this is where some of the lie comes in because it says what's 5G. It says 5G is the fifth generation technology for cellular networks. Well, I guess it could be cellular networks, but what kind of cells are they talking about? Your cells, because 5G is an actual weapon. It's a weapon. It's not just for your entertainment although that's distracting and nice to keep you off their trail but it's for cellular networks so i'll leave this link because it is interesting to go through it and um, at least know what what they're actually doing to you like there's your ham radio there's your satellites you wonder why gates the uh, genocidist was so interested in satellite technology. So here I go. I'm going to just scroll real quickly. You see this whole list. It's just basically two pages, single line of showing these technologies that are weapons that can be used against you. Then they explain the frequency range and stuff. And look at this. Oh, aren't they nice? Helpful patents for targets. That would be us. That would be us who don't want to be attacked. This is it. Look, helpful, the helpful patents for targets. Isn't that nice? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Isn't that nice and so generous of them? So they show this list of um, helpful patents for targets, which are the basically targets would be the enemies of the state. Um, anyone who doesn't fit their narrative or doesn't go along with it. But, okay, so 
here's a couple that we could use, device for magnetic and electric field shielding and all this, protect living systems from electromagnetic fields, but that's just us. You know, without the pollinators, without all the insects that we have, um, you know, we're not going to live for more than four years. So you can protect yourself, but unless you start trying to take these things down, no matter what, just taking them down, getting rid of them, there is no other answer because you can only shield yourself for so long until your whole environment is affected. And speaking about um, innocent uh, insects, look at this. So here we go, US 896-7029B1, S. Mill Calvert, current assignee, T. Mars Associates Trustees for Toxic Mosquito Aerial Release. That's what the T. Mars stands for. But when you look at the anagram for T. Mars, you see it? So do you see that? It says SMART like smart meters and the smart technology. And regarding the specific inventor, S. Mill Calvert, I could not really find any information on this specific person. But there's the anagram to the name is metallic silver. And you know, uh, like Gates belongs to the Silver Chair Society. But before I go looking at that, if we have time, um, this says toxic mosquito aerial release system. And it says, a device for the aerial release of mosquitoes includes an unmanned aerial vehicle operable by remote control. It carries a container holding a central processing unit and a mosquito breeding bin, which is a self-contained volume housing mosquitoes and a mosquito food having a toxin suitable to be transmitted by mosquito bite after the mosquito consumes the mosquito food. A release tube is connected to the mosquito breeding bin and sized to release mosquitoes from the mosquito breeding bin. A valve is connected to the release tube and is operable by remote control so that when open, the mosquitoes have an open pathway out of the container through the release tube. Now this is going to be in effect until the year 2034. And this talks about the background art and it says governments have sought after weapons that can be used to deliver chemicals, viral and bacteriological substances for lethal and non-lethal administration. But I think that um, all the patents that we saw that were more about targeting and destroying people, you can probably bet your bottom dollar that it's going to be for lethal purposes or nefarious purposes at least. Yeah, look in here, they are, they're trying to save us. Non-lethal uses typically include peacekeeping, operations for use in actions not considered military operations. So this is basically the government's way to get around the chemical weapons um, treaties that they had. So skipping down here, it says this 1972 treaty banning the production of microbial and other biological agents or toxins and their means of delivery. It says this treaty has been interpreted not to apply to biological agents or toxins themselves, but rather certain purposes for which they may be employed, which are prohibited. Thus, there are permitted purposes defined to include prophylactic, protective and other peaceful purposes, right? We're going to just have something else inject you, even though you didn't really consent, but the biological agents or toxins may not be retained in quantities that have no justification. Um, I've long time ago, I read to you guys and showed you the unauthorized storage of toxic agents, the church committee hearings. You should um, look through that and you can just search. Here's the document. I'll leave a link. But you can just go to the left there in that little um, circle and search a word. I guess there's other ways to inject things. They use the dart guns and drill bits um, that you put in silver dollars. There's your silver again, but I'm getting off track, so I'm going to go back. But this is the information, 1975 document. Okay, so this just goes back and it says, In times of armed conflict and the pursuit of destroying an enemy, living organisms 
and infected materials derived from them have been used by state and non-state actors. They're all actors and we're all their enemies. And they love to go back and replay all the um, rituals that they did. Look at this. They just love talking about it and bringing up their past accomplishments. But this inventor knows what they do. He says, well-known methods of toxin delivery include dispersion affected. Let me try to fix my screen. So well-known methods of a toxin delivery include dispersion affected by using an aerosol spray, explosive and direct food or water contamination. And here's another one too, LIDAR. LIDAR. This is people being radiated with lasers. Well, lasers and radiation. But they're being hit by this company, English Air Service. And you know what? I contacted and wrote these people and I asked them, what are you doing? And they said they're, um, they were contracted by a utility company, but they could not tell me which company because they um, signed some gag order as they're spraying Chula Vista. This is um, Southern California, San Diego. And they said, you need to ask the utility company, but yet they wouldn't give me the utility company's name. So. This is their company, and you know, here they are dealing with the EMF electromagnetic stuff. I think that's called the Yugo antenna. And I've tracked this plane before, but look at this. So here, here's their spraying of toxins, and they always have to show kids. They always show the kids because the kids kind of disarm people. They think, oh, if they're a parent or something, they're not going to be that bad. But this is their company, English Air Service LLC on Facebook. So they are just one of the companies, one of the many companies that are using gases, exhausts, poisons, and LIDAR lasers, radiation, EMFs. And guess what? They're hiring, they just keep hiring. These people keep adding on people to work for them. So you get conflicted because these are the people who basically are paying your bills as you kill the country. Okay, so here's just another example, just one example, October 15th. This is a flight pattern over a reservoir. That's a Otai Lakes Reservoir right there. And it was by this aircraft from Direct Action Aviation, LC. And I showed this and graphed this. Every time they went low, that's when they were over the reservoir. I matched it when I did the playback. This is their plane. So now they're up in, um, or they were, yeah, they're up in Stockton. Or here's their schedule. So here's their schedule. They're going to be there on um, Modesto and Stockton. And you know what's really interesting is um, they do code. They use the numerology and stuff and they code here and their flights have a lot of meaning if you stop to look. So we're going to go look at their just their last latest see what they're doing. So isn't that poetic? Um, they're flying over New Jerusalem. Yep. Um, so nothing is really a mistake. And there's your 33 and here's your skydive California. And if this aircraft was just, just working with, let's say parachuters, when they landed, they would land and then they would pick up people, but they never touched down completely but they would have picked up, they would have stopped and had to climb up again, but no, nope, they just stayed. I mean, I think they're using skydiving as a little bit of an excuse, like that's all we're doing. So you let your guard down. But this flight specifically was um, Sunday, October 15th of this year. So 696 miles over, overhead, every time they hit a reservoir, they are very low. And they just happen to be over New Jerusalem. And this is just east of San Francisco. But they really seem to like the injection idea, um, especially recently, because they're seeing how people don't want to do the needle crafting. 
And so here, they're just going to help you out and they'll bring it to you. But I'm going to read just a little bit more. It says the toxic mosquito arrow release system works by having a small RF controlled drone that that's radio frequency that includes a flying mosquito breeding laboratory. So when Miss Pris here tells you that they need more labs across the country, uh, then maybe this is what she's talking about. I can't help but hear uh, Bill Gates's voice in here when I read this, but all the conditions are perfect for the mosquitoes to be born. Oh, because they have another patent that helps them monitor or manipulate the weather. So they can control the weather, so they can control their little bioweapons. Remember, I covered this, and basically that's so high up, it's like this height of what an airplane would hit. So this is just weather modification. But they love the word injection, or the thought of it, because they know that you don't ever catch anything. You have to be injected with it or poisoned. So that's how they're going to get you. They're going to do it. So all the conditions are perfect for mosquitoes to be born, to eat, and become contaminated, and to safely, because it's only about their safety, not yours, safely evacuate the toxic mosquito aerial release system when it is flying above the targeted enemy. That would be you and the cities and wherever. Swarms of mosquitoes will then fly down and bite the enemy, which is us. As the enemy swats at a mosquito that just bit him, he will not realize that this toxic mosquito bite is much more effective than a bullet. Now, this could be either released to instill more fear or to get people to want to um, consent to the other kind of spraying by the bear. Remember, I did the whole video on the Delta Methrin um, trade secrets, which they put in their products and they don't tell you what they're spraying over you because it's a trade secret. But this is 100% lethal to fish, lethal to insects, and um, has huge safety issues for unborn babies and us. Oh yeah, and these, um, she's getting $10 million sent to the Department of Commerce so she's hitting all the little narrative talking points and she's not the only one. I'm telling you, they're all, you guys, they're all in on it together. And we need to start calling these people out. We need to start writing them. See here, I'm writing Alaska Airlines. I'm asking them what the hell are they doing? And they say basically that the clouds referenced in the attachments that I mentioned and showed them are contrails, short for condensation trails. That's what they're saying that that is. They say that um, these are widely known as contrails and do not pose any public risk. That's bullshit. They do. So they're just saying what they're doing is just simply um, moisture in the air. Yeah, that's their moisture. When you walk out in a cold day and you're breathing and you see that little fog behind you, it does not stick around like that. These people are idiots. They're dangerous idiots. And I'll be calling their corporate offices. There's their number. Yeah, don't believe them. Clean energy future. Fight these guys. 